Welcome back, Video Boys fans. You are watching the fourth and final installment of the Video Boys Amazing Spider-Man Review. Here we go with part four. All right, so it's time for the final showdown. The lizard has started on his plan to turn everyone in the city into lizards, and Spider-Man must stop him. Oh, wow, he's actually doing it. People are actually turning into lizards. How is Spider-Man going to get out of this one? What? Spider-Man asks Gwen Stacy, the high school student, to concoct an antidote for turning into a lizard by herself. This is perhaps the laziest, most nonsensical cop-out to this problem that the filmmakers could have thought of. I mean, she's in high school. How could she possibly know how to do something like this? Aren't there any other more experienced scientists at Oscorp that they could be asking for help? And the whole antidote only takes like 10 minutes to make, as if making it was just no big deal for her. What, does Oscorp have some kind of lizard antidote making machine? Antidote complete. Oh, okay, I guess there is a lizard antidote making machine. But then, at one point, the lizard even catches Gwen Stacy in his lab and, for some reason, doesn't bother to figure out what she's doing there and whether or not she's using the lizard antidote making machine. I mean, it's his lab, he knows that that antidote making machine is in there, why not just destroy it? But no, he just leaves her alone in there. So, as with many of the action scenes in this movie, we get some pretty good moments with Spider-Man traveling to Oscorp Tower and his subsequent battle with the Lizard, but things start to fall apart again once we get to the part of the movie that affects the plot. So Spider-Man and the Lizard are fighting, and just as it looks like Spider-Man is about to be killed, Captain Stacy shows up and saves his life. Hey! Guess from Gwen! Peter, go. So Spider-Man goes to go put the antidote into the lizard making machine while Captain Stacy continuously shoots the lizard in the face. Gosh, Captain Stacy is actually a really cool character. I wouldn't mind seeing more of him in the sequels. What? Erg. Can't this stupid movie do anything right? Alright, so thanks to the Stacys, and Spider-Man I suppose, but not really, the lizard is defeated and the whole city is drenched in lizard antidote juice. But now Captain Stacy is dying, having sacrificed his life to save Peter and the rest of the city. So with his last dying words, Stacy says this. So I want you to promise me something, okay? Leave Gwen. Can anyone tell me why Stacy's death was more meaningful than Uncle Ben's was? But whatever. What does Peter do next? Party again. Sorry, this really won't happen again, I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep, Mr. Parker. So, despite the fact that her father saved his life and gave him one single dying wish, Peter is going to date Gwen anyway. The end. And you know what? That's okay. By this point in the movie, the audience is already so disconnected with this protagonist that we honestly just don't care anymore. Like I said, I've given up trying to understand this Peter Parker a long time ago. So then, midway through the credits, we get a little scene where we see Kurt Connors in jail being confronted by a mysterious man in shadows who seems to know the truth about Peter's parents' disappearance. But then that's just it. The audience will have to wait for a sequel in order to see the movie that they wanted to see in the first place. Honestly, if they were saving all of this for a sequel, what was the point of making this movie? Was it to provide an all-new origin story for Spider-Man? Because I'm not sure that that was really necessary. A short flashback could have pretty much done the trick. Was it to tell a story about the lizard wanting to transform everyone in the city into lizards? Maybe, but was anyone interested in that storyline? 
like, at all? If you're like me, the answer is no. Throughout this whole movie, I just kept waiting for the lizard nonsense to be over with so I could go back to seeing Peter uncovering the conspiracy behind his parents' disappearance, especially since the whole first act of the movie dealt exclusively with that storyline. So, with all of that in mind, what was the point of making this movie? Well, the only thing I can think of is, unfortunately, money. A lot of movies today are succumbing to the idea that audiences will be willing to pay twice to see two halves of the same movie. And this movie is no different. But still, rather than taking advantage of its extra time to develop characters, The Amazing Spider-Man still nonetheless leaves us with an incomplete understanding of our protagonist, Peter Parker. He's a cool skateboarder, yet he's lame and has no friends. He's empathetic to the bullied, yet he's cruel to others at the first opportunity. He's determined to find the truth about his dead parents, yet he's easily distracted by pretty blue lights. Even the supporting cast kind of gets lost in this movie. Uncle Ben's death is never a turning point. Dr. Connor's initial character is dropped once we see the lizard. Gwen is apparently the smartest high school student in the world. And one villain even disappears without a trace. But I suppose Captain Stacy was a good character, but he died, so he won't help the sequels. And Aunt May, wait, was she even in this movie? Oh, there she is. Peter brought her eggs. Gosh, we haven't seen Aunt May since just after Uncle Ben died. Has she just been waiting for those eggs this whole time? Advocates for this movie's existence have astoundingly praised this film for allegedly being closer to the comics than the original Spider-Man film. What? Both films have changes from the comics, that's not an issue. It's just that when the original Spider-Man movie was being created, any change to the comic storyline were all in efforts to make the story more theatrically appropriate. And the result is a really good movie. When The Amazing Spider-Man was being created, however, changes to the comic storyline were not efforts to make a better film, but instead to make a film different enough from the first one. Remember that the original Spider-Man film was over 20 years in the making, with hundreds of drafts being rejected until the right script, cast, and director were found. The new Amazing Spider-Man film, however, was created under much different circumstances. The Walt Disney Company had recently absorbed Marvel, and with it, the film rights to many of its characters. In order for Sony Pictures to maintain the rights to Spider-Man for a bit longer, they would need to rush the production of the Spider-Man reboot, something that they only began working on after talks for Spider-Man 4 eventually fell through. Essentially, The Amazing Spider-Man was rushed into production even though the script severely needed more work. If it had been given the time to blossom the way the original movie had, maybe then we wouldn't see so many discontinued story arcs or a villain who disappears midway through the movie. But no, the final product is simply a sloppy, rushed disaster. But what really makes me take offense to this movie's existence isn't how much of a cynical cash grab it is. After all, Hollywood has been making cynical cash grabs for as long as films have existed. But what really hurts me about this movie is how much fans of this movie have been bashing the old Spider-Man movies, saying things about how good The Amazing Spider-Man is and how they've never liked the old movies. And this hurts me because it just isn't true. The original Spider-Man trilogy was great. It captured the bright optimism and the amazing adventures that were synonymous with the Spider-Man that we've all grown up with. And even though the third movie wasn't that good, it still had more heart in it than this movie does. Spider-Man is supposed to be optimistic and fun, and other than a few action scenes, this movie isn't either of those things. Most of this movie is so unnecessarily dark and awkward and weird. It's weird! Unlike its predecessors, The Amazing Spider-Man is not character-driven, not story-driven, it's just profit-driven. The bad definitely outweighs the good in this movie, making it truly a second-rate Spider-Man film and a terrible film overall. Thank you for watching The Video Boy's Amazing Spider-Man Review. Tune in this summer for even more Video Boy's reviews. Coming soon to VideoBoysReviews.com See you next time. Spider-Man works in mysterious ways, Shelley. And wherever he is, he loves you. Thank you.